in the early 1980s, we wanted to identify, we wanted to develop better therapies for kidney cancer. And the approach we took was by identifying the genes for kidney cancer. When we started, we thought kidney cancer was a single disease. We treated them all the same way surgically. We treated advanced disease all the same way with, with drugs, with medicines, none of which worked. What we've learned over the years is that kidney cancer is not a single disease. It's a number of different types of cancers that just happen to occur in the kidney. They have different histologies. They look different under the microscope. They have different clinical course. Some uh, are very, grow very slow and are indolent. Others are very aggressive and can spread very quickly. And they all respond differently to therapy. And as we've come to know, they are caused by different genes. So our approach to identifying the genes that cause kidney cancer and in developing therapies for kidney cancer. XF96 extracellular flux analyzer. What this machine does is it is a remarkably powerful machine for understanding metabolic flux. Understanding, so we're studying the metabolic basis of kidney cancer and what this, what this equipment will allow us to do is to do things like evaluate oxygen uptake and evaluate glycolysis or evaluate lactate production, which is a surrogate for glycolysis. So we have some kidney cancers that are very, very aggressive. And those, those cancers are characterized by mutation of a Krebs cycle enzyme called fumarate hydratase. When we run those cancers on this machine, we can see they're taking up almost no oxygen. Oxidative phosphorylation, in other words, the cell is breathing, uh, is way down in those cells, and their glycolysis is way up. And we can measure that on this machine. So then we take another type of, of kidney cancer called clear cell kidney cancer, which is characterized by mutation of the VHL gene. Those cells uh, are very different. Their metabolic makeup is extremely different. Uh, they're, they're breathing normally, they're ta taking up oxygen normally, and they're not, uh, they're not doing nearly as much glycolysis, they're not taking up uh, very much glucose at all. So there's two very different types of cancers, and we treat them in very, very different ways. So this lets us analyze, uh, develop the metabolic profile of these cancer cell lines, uh, and also helps us evaluate response to therapy. We can put certain therapies in there and see how that will affect the metabolic pathways. So it's really a remarkable instrument. What we found by studying these and other types of kidney cancer is if we look at all the genes that are known to cause kidney cancer, which there are about 16 of those genes, that kidney cancer is, as I say, fundamentally a metabolic disease. And each of these genes affects the cells ability to sense changes in oxygen, iron, nutrients, or energy. So kidney cancer is fundamentally metabolic. And the main approach we are working on is targeting the metabolic basis of this cancer. We're very, very encouraged by the results that we've seen, and we're hopeful that this will provide the foundation for the development of effective forms of therapy for all forms of kidney cancer. Hereditary cancer syndrome that we study is called Bert Hogg Dubé, BHD. That's another hereditary cancer syndrome in which patients develop uh, cutaneous fibrofolliculomas, skin bumps, and pulmonary cyst and kidney cancer. So we described the kidney cancer going with Bert Hogg Dubé in the 90s and it took us a number of years to find that gene, which we called FLCN. Now that gene, it turns out, changed everything we know, changed our entire direction in our study of kidney cancer because that gene is obviously very metabolic. That protein, folliculin, uh, and its partners bind another protein called AMPK, which is critical 
to cellular energetics. It's the energy sensor sensing superhighway of the cell. And it turns out that, that this cancer gene and its binding partners bind AMPK and they have a big role in, a, in affecting how the cell senses nutrients. The third gene that we study is the most incredible in, in many ways. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this causes a hereditary cancer syndrome called HLRCC, hereditary lyomyomatosis and renal cell cancer. So we saw our first patient with this in 1989. It hadn't been described uh, then. And it's an 18 year old young woman who came up here from Charlottesville. I took out her kidney. She went on to die nine months later of metastatic kidney cancer. And her mom died 14 months after that. Well, we never forget a patient. We never forget a family. It took us 18 years to figure out what that young woman and her mom had. And we know now that that's hereditary lyomyomatosis, renal cell cancer, HLRCC. But they get what are called lyomyomas, which are little muscle tumors in the skin and in the uterus. And they get a very aggressive type of kidney cancer. So the gene for this was found in 2001. And shockingly, the gene for this is the gene for the Krebs cycle enzyme fumarate hydratase, or FH. So how on earth, we thought to ourselves, does mutation of a Krebs cycle enzyme cause cancer? So what we and others have shown is that when FH is deficient, it's mutated in these cancers, these cancers undergo a metabolic shift. They shift to aerobic glycolysis and decreased mitochondrial function, decreased oxidative phosphorylation. This, unfortunately, this is called the Warburg effect in cancer, and this gives these cancer cells an incredible advantage. The other thing we have found over the years is that even though these are an incredibly aggressive type of cancer, they also, these, these, this cancer also has a big Achilles heel. They're very, very dependent on glucose, on sugar, for metabolism and for energy, and for making energy. So we have studied this pathway, have developed a number of therapeutic approaches for patients with HLRCC kidney cancer, and we're very, very encouraged about the progress of those clinical trials. Now we also study another type of inherited kidney cancer, which is also caused by a Krebs cycle enzyme. This one is succinate dehydrogenase. And we have a number of families with succinate dehydrogenase mutations in their germline, and they get uh, SDH deficient kidney cancer, which is also a very aggressive form, very aggressive type of kidney cancer. So we are, we are uh, working on developing similarly a therapeutic approach, therapeutic approach for patients with SDH deficient kidney cancer.